Hello. Hello, everyone. everyone it's been a while but it's Yuri and I'm back with another plant video today's video will be an unboxing but also just a general update on how my plants are doing and basically whatever has happened in the past month or so I haven't really been active on YouTube it's been really busy at work it's uh, it's been really busy but I am super responsive on Instagram and I really appreciate all of you who have messaged me or checked in on me and asked for another video. So here we are, you made it happen. And um, I guess this plant also made it happen too. I have some small albos that I've been growing from a cutting, but honestly it's been taking a while for them to put out new leaves and I wanted a very big monstera to replace this one that I have in the corner. I don't know what I'm going to do with the big monstera that I have. I've had, that was one of my first plants from probably about three or four years ago at this point. I love it, but it's a little bit gangly and I think it's time to swap it out with the new model. So excited! By the way, I am... For reference, I'm about a little over five foot tall, and this thing is around three feet tall. It was shipped to me UPS next day from Florida, I believe, and I bought it off of a Facebook plant group. Some of you have been asking where I've been getting some of my plants. Uh, there's a lot of Facebook plant groups out there. You just have to search them. Those have been the most interesting for me to shop on and you still want to make sure that the seller has sold before or seems to be reputable because you never know what you're going to get soft cushiony insulation. This is what I see in my attic, but I'm assuming it's paper all the way through and not like denim or something. So it's just this and we are at this polyfill layer. <laughs> um, it's, it says pull, <laughs> so I guess that's what I'll do, I will pull. In with the heat pack on the bottom by the roots. It's not hot anymore. Alrighty. A big reveal.
So it's a little shorter than I was expecting after unwrapping it, but it is still gorgeous. Look at these leaves. Millie, what do you think? Wow. This is beautiful. The top leaves are definitely much prettier than the bottom ones. A little bit of discoloration on some of these bottom leaves. Some browning. You can see a little bit more of the damaged ones there, but that variegation is gorgeous. Nellie mostly likes the polyfill on the bottom. This one's the newest leaf here. This is huge splash of white. And the stem is pretty white as well. There's like a lot of light coloring on the stem all the way up. This is going to replace my regular Monstera and hopefully I can give it a good moss pole to climb up on. So I need to lift this outside and I'm just gonna leave it outside and see what happens. But I wanna put my elbow there now. So this needs to go, but I'm not sure I can, I can lift it. I'm really bad at doing squats and lifting with my legs. it's been a while because it's been very dark I've been busy and I mostly don't have time to do anything outside of work except later at night and then the lighting is really bad but honestly the lighting has been bad all around there's like Sun hitting me right now for the first time today and this cat has just jumped on my lap So we're going to walk around today and I will show you some updated plant growth, some things that have been going well, some things that haven't, and also I have been putting off my chore of cutting off some of the older, more yellow leaves. And I normally don't post photos of that on Instagram or really film videos about it either. So I figured I would leave them up and then show you all how I like to trim things and keep everything nice and tidy. So I guess we'll start here with my giant Hawaiian pothos. And when I say giant, I mean giant. These leaves are huge. And apparently this is a very big pest right now in Florida. It's just been taking over people's lawns, going up trees. It's kind of impossible to keep contained. But here in California, we like them as house plants. So I used to have one a long time ago that I had to get rid of. 
and I was really sad about it. But I had to get rid of it because it was covered in mealybugs. And I had never dealt with mealybugs prior to that point, so I didn't catch it until it was too late. And then I got really stressed out about it spreading to other plants, and I just tossed it. Now I know how to deal with it a lot better, but I uh, did regret tossing the plant. So I, when I found this one hanging in my local nursery at East Bay Nursery, I purchased it. So here it is. It's been growing, doing pretty well. Some of the leaves it came with are a little bit scraggly. So um, I cut, oh, I just totally ripped this. I'm going to cut this off. Maybe now. <laughs> And this doesn't get that much light. It's pretty far from the window. But it does okay here, so I'm gonna keep it here. I have this cart. I used to have it on the other side of my room, but I brought it over and gave it some wheels so I can move it around. I'm not sure what I wanna do with it yet. I actually would prefer to have this container on the shelf over here, so I might organize some things around. In this container, I have a few alocasia, and the reason I have these alocasia is they were getting attacked by spider mites, and part of the reason for that is the humidity. So spider mites thrive when it's drier and less humid, and this thing's doing fine. It just culls the leaf and puts out new ones, so there's a new one coming out. So not too worried about it, although this does look sad, and I'm going to just try to pry it off. If not, I can use this scissors, but this came off. It's really dry, so I was just able to pull it off. But I can't get this to be in an area humid enough, and I don't want to put it into my IKEA greenhouse cabinets, which I'll show you a little bit later. So it's just going to stay in here for now, and honestly, I'm not doing a good job keeping it humid in there either, but maybe I can keep the spider mites from attacking these leaves. So... This one, and I know when I first showed everyone that I got this plant, people were asking me about spider mites because they are really good at attracting spider mites. I've mentioned this plant a few times in videos. Right now, there's not too many on here, actually. I think it's gotten better since I've put it inside this little encasement, but uh, it's still not great, and there are, I, I do see some mites on here, so I'm gonna need to spray it. So that's what's in my cabinet for my little greenhouse thing. And on the other side, I have three plants, and I'm actually growing these for my co founder. She actually gifted me some string of turtle cuttings a long time ago, and I have since propagated them into many different plants and have been giving them away. But her string of turtles died, so I am giving back the turtles, basically. Um, this one is a Florida ghost cutting. It was my the top of my existing Florida ghost plant, and it's putting out a new leaf, which is exciting. But this is going to go to her soon. It probably should be repotted and you can see there's a little root sticking out about to escape and this one is a philodendron six nine six eight six is the number i have a really big version of this i think this was a mid cutting maybe so you can see that cut on the stem there but these are going to my co-founder, and I'm just keeping them here so that I remember. Alright, so... I've been moving some things around on the shelf, and actually there's now... different plants on this top part. I used to just have like this Hoya pubicolix, but now I put some of my other philodendron that used to be on that rolling cart. So I'm trying to reorganize things. It's not quite set up yet. But here are the plants that are up here. We have this huge pastazonum. That's one of the three leaves it has. It's doing this weird thing against the wall. It's also putting out a new plant, uh, sorry, a new leaf. And it doesn't really have anywhere else to go. These Philodendron tend to be crawlers, which means that they crawl along 
the floor, in this case, the pot. And to keep going, even if there's no soil. <laughs> so I could put another pot there or repot it in like a rectangular pot, which is what a lot of people do, or just cut it off and propagate it. I haven't decided yet, but I do want this leaf to come out first, so I'm waiting for it. I have a Potho Sabu Blue or Epipremnum Sabu Blue. And it looks a little dehydrated. You can see that the leaves are not as perky right now. So I'm gonna give this a little bit of water. Right next to it is a Philodendron Ring of Fire. I have a few of these. This one is my largest, but my least favorite. It's just hard to capture. And lots of air roots sticking out, but I do not want to cut this at the moment. I want it to just keep growing big. And here's my Hoya Pubicolix, which used to have way more space on the shelf by itself, but now it has to share. There's my Monstera Peru, and here's a leaf that's older and gone. I'm just gonna, I just tugged at it and it fell off. So there you go. But the new leaves are actually lower. I chopped this up and it put out a new growth point on the bottom of the plant and the bigger leaves down here are actually the newest leaves, not the top ones. And next to it is my Gloriosum, which is much happier on this corner than where I used to have it. So there's a new leaf coming out even though it's winter. These string plants have stuck here for a while. Here's the original mother plant for the string of turtles started out, like I said, with some cuttings and I cut a bunch of it and created more plants. So that's always really fun to do. This is a variegated string of hearts. This is a regular string of hearts that I don't care quite as much for anymore, but it's hanging in there. This is an air plant that had its edges spray painted with pink for some reason. I'm probably going to cut the edges off. But it's doing okay. It put out these new shoots in the middle. It probably needs some water, actually. This is kind of a random assortment of a sensitive plant that decided not to die. I didn't give it good humidity for a while, but it just curls up because it's sensitive and doesn't really like to be touched. And actually, the leaves go like this at night as well. They curl up because there's no sun to be had. Next to it, on the left, is a plant from my co-founder. Actually, both of these plants are from her. They were cuttings of, this one is a Pothos mandula. And this one is a Pothos enjoy. And some of the older leaves are kind of falling off, so. Let's pull that off. And I don't know where this guy's going. I'm gonna give it a trim and maybe gift this cutting to someone. Some air plants down here, and here's a assortment of philodendron silver stripe cuttings that I took. I really liked these ones because they the leaves had way more white to it and a little bit less of the green. So I'm just curious to see what new leaves it'll produce. That first one, which is the darkest one right here, it has way more green, but it's still really pretty. So I'm excited to see what this turns into. Now below here is a Philodendron Higantium. That's right, Wolfie. This one is the plant that I got from Walmart. And I really didn't care for it for a while, but it's very easy to take care of. So if you are thinking of buying one of these and ignoring it, if you can find one for cheap, mine was $20, I would definitely go for it. It's honestly been very easy to manage and I stuck it in this corner because I don't care for it. Other plants I don't care for are in this bottom part. Um, so I have this variegated ivy, which you definitely should not plant outside and I barely water it, so it looks a little bit scrappy. There's a Kokodama Christmas cactus that I also don't water, but it's not dead. And a snake plant that kind of looks like the top of a pineapple that I also don't water, but it's doing fine because it's a snake plant. And next to it is a plant I care about, which is 
a philodendron florida ghost the newer leaves come out more of a minty color and then they fade into a, a darker green color and like i said i took the top part off to propagate for my co-founder and here is a new growth point that has come out so i should have new leaves on here again soon these are the leaves that i just ripped off for those of you who were asking for an update on my Mama Pink Princess after I cut it, so the two leaves that are on here are a little bit whatever. They're gonna need to go at some point. But there's actually, I think, two or three different growth points that were activated after I cut it again. So this one is quite cute. Not that much pink, but little splash right there there's more pink here but it's also kind of splotchy i think this one this one right here is another growth point so we'll see when there's more leaves that come out and the final new leaf that i noticed is right here right underneath the petiole of this one or i guess on top so that's pretty cool I'm not sure what to do with this plant yet. I do want to take the little cuttings and propagate them again, but maybe I'll let it grow out a little bit longer. I'm not sure. This is a sad butterworth that I bought to catch little gnats. Oh, Wolfie, that's not for you to go up there. There's not really that much space. I don't know what your plan is. What's what's your plan? What are you up to? Wolfie's very clumsy. So it's very likely that he knocks over my pink princess. He doesn't eat my plants. And I've never seen him jump up here before. Not really sure what he's doing right now. Okay, well, he's, I think he's going to stay here for a bit, so we will continue with the rest of the plants on the shelf. Um, this is a tetrasperma that has not done anything since I cut it off. I thought it would put out a new growth point at some point, but honestly, it's not dying. It's definitely not thriving, but it's also not doing anything else. This is a lemon-lime... I actually don't really know what it's called. It's like Thai, Thai something, Thai sunrise maybe. I got this in a pack of other plants and I kind of ignore it. It's doing okay. I could take care of it better. I was going to sell it or give it away, but I kind of do like the colors. So I'll probably keep it for now. I mean, it's pretty low effort. This is a Silver Sword Mama, and I've cut it a bunch, so it's started to get really bushy. There's a lot of leaves all around, and it's not very pretty, so I'm also probably going to cut this at some point. And here's a cutting from the Mama, which looks much nicer. It's much prettier, because it has sort of a better growing shape instead of all the small scraggly leaves in a bundle. Back here is a Birkin and I also don't really like this plant but it requires minimal effort. You'll notice there's a trend here. These are kind of like my minimal effort plants at the moment. I want to put them somewhere else so I can put this primo spot to better use. And here is a plant that I actually do like. It's my Mexicanum, my Philodendron Mexicanum. It's putting out a new leaf here. And it stuck one leaf out here and then ended up getting burned. So it looks really ugly when you're outside of this window. I'm going to chop this off. And that's this corner. We got some more regular plants going on over here against my fireplace. It doesn't get that much light, so I put some Dracaena. There's like a little cardboard palm. 
there's me and my few calathea, calathea are over here this little rattlesnake one that I've had for a while I have a this one whatever it's called <laughs> And this one is an Orbifolia that I have not been doing a great job watering. So these are some sad leaves that also got burned and crispy. So I'm going to cut these off as well after I give them a good watering. This is the plant that I unboxed. And for the most part it unboxed really nicely but some of the older leaves are already dying from transit and from the new environment, so I'm gonna have to clip those. So I'm filming this video because a lot of you asked for an update on my houseplant situation, where my plants are, and some of the plants that you've watched grow during my videos, just to see what the status is there. I don't know how to make this more entertaining. Like I've seen a bunch of these houseplant tour videos, I've seen a bunch of people talking about this plant used to be this small and now it's this big. I mean, honestly, there's not that much more to say about the plants, but if there was something specific you were looking for, or if you have any suggestions in terms of making this more fun to watch, please let me know in the comments below, or you can always DM me on Instagram. I am responsive to both. So just let me know. But I don't really have any ideas at the moment, so I'm going to continue on to show you the rest of my plants. I think this will be a little bit more interesting because of the way that my plants are organized. Like this pool thing. So I had been eyeing this thing from Design Within Reach for about six months. And it's pretty tall. It's about five feet tall. I know this because I'm about five feet tall and it's a little bit taller than me. And I bought this on sale because Design Within Reach has a bunch of sales throughout the year and I love it. I should have purchased it sooner. I think it's perfect for what I was looking for. And I have this Tetrasperma kind of climbing up the pole to make it a little bit less white and more green and that's at the very bottom right there honestly I should have put it on the floor like this variegated ZZ plant and used something else there but it doesn't get that much sun so it's probably fine here is my cute little philodendron squamiferum and the new petioles end up being this like funny bright reddish color and it's really cute. I really like it. I think it's super underrated. I don't hear many people talking about it. But I love it. On the floor here is my begonia maculata that I got from Flower Shop. I'm growing a bunch of cuttings of it. It's really easy to propagate. And I actually just gave away a propagated plant to my friend who helped me even find this plant and told me that it was on sale at Flowerland. So I'm excited to see hers grow. She's Kara Let's Grow on Instagram if you want to give her a follow. Her hair is super cool and green and she loves flowers and plants and has some cute cats. Anyways, back to this pole. We have a Vitarifolium, and honestly I was really excited about this plant until some people posted a variegated version of it, and then I was like, oh man, maybe I should have held out and bought a variegated one, but it is a fun pendulum anthurium. Sorry, if I said philodendron, I meant anthurium. This is an anthurium. Next to it is my prized possession plant. It's a caramel marble. This is the newest leaf. It comes out kind of this interesting reddish color. And then it turns more white and white and white over time. You can see it here a little bit. You can see it here too. So it's hard to photograph this plant, but the leaf is huge and kind of jagged and cute. And I'm waiting for a new growth point to happen because I chopped the top when I got it and I'm propagating it in a greenhouse cabinet, which I will show you in a little bit. 
Above it is my other pendulumentherium. This is my pendulifolium, and it's gonna put out a new leaf at some point, but this is the only one it has right now. These get massive, so hopefully I can give it the right conditions. Here is a basket of micans that I gave a moss pole for it to climb instead of spreading out, but it's kind of doing both. And my tortum, which is almost done unraveling this new leaf. It's so weird and I love it. Love it so much. And next to it is my epipremnum pinnatum variegata. This is the biggest leaf that it has and it looks awesome. Putting out some newer leaves here. I've noticed with this one, the leaves come out kind of small and then they grow larger with time. So this is actually the oldest leaf on it and it's the largest. Or it just might be less happy in here. I don't know. And that's my tower. I would highly recommend this if you have been thinking about it. It's really easy to slide these on and off too. I'm not going to do this one handed, but I could if I wanted to. So this is what the actual wall looks like on this side. I have two IKEA greenhouses. One that's more for propagating, that's that one over there. And this one I'm propagating too, but it's also for bigger plants because there's no shelf in the middle. And I have some just regular plants all around, like this Birds of Paradise that I'm hoping will reach the ceiling soon. And this is the Philodendron 6. 9686 mother plant. It already put out a bunch of new leaves. This one will not stop growing. And here are some plants that I'm propagating that are more common. So I actually had two of these, but like I said, I just gave one away. Some silver swords and some more turtles and some micans. It's actually warm, right? It's not that warm, like it, I can't tell the difference, but I think it is warmer than another surface because there's grow lights right underneath it. So I do think it's helping the plants grow a little faster, even though it is winter. And here is my IKEA cabinet. I installed a shelf so that there's more airflow. I am propagating a bunch of Philodendron Rio cuttings right now. This is the mother plant that I just got. There's a bunch of good stuff growing in here. There's some white wizards and some pink princesses. Sorry, these are white knights and some pink princesses. This is a white wizard right there. There's an Ataba Poense up there. More white nights that I posted in my Instagram photo. These are some imported plants. They're um, Syndapsis trubii blocks that I... and some more plants that are propagated. As you can see the humidity and the temperature is pretty good. It's winter right now but says it's um, 78 degrees Fahrenheit with 85% humidity. I try not to open this cabinet up too often because it does release humidity every time. So that's how we're looking at it from outside. I have a few more plants up here. This one is one that I care a lot about because it's from a friend. It's a white princess and it's putting on a new leaf again. It's been hard to keep this moist because it's on this hotter temperature and so I think the water is drying up a bit faster. This is an Anthurium Vecii long and narrow and the one next to it is an Anthurium Vecii regular. And next to it is a Collocasia mojito that is in semi-hydroponics but I put too much water in here so this happened because I think of too much water root rot it's not dead yet, so I think the new leaves will be better, but basically the old leaves all 
did not like the additional water. It happens. It's just part of it. Honestly, if I lose this plant, I don't care that much either. But I hope it survives. And next to it is a Ho Jose Buono with a new leaf coming out soon. And a little guardian elf for the holidays. I'm going to not open this up as well because it has humidity in there that I want to contain, but I built this moss wall. If you want to know how I built this cabinet, let me know in the comments below and I'll post a video. I did film some of it, but I'm not sure I have enough content to upload it, but if you do want to know more about it, I am happy to edit that, so just let me know. This is the top of the caramel marble and it's putting out a new leaf already. This one unfurled while I had it. And I'm trying to give it another pot right there so that the air roots go into here and then I can cut it again. So that's the plan of a big tortum plant that hasn't been showing new growth, but it's doing okay. Behind it, I have some goodies. I have a variegated Adansonii, a Melanochrism up here, and a variegated Fridek. Lots of grass growing on the moss wall. This is a Syndapsis trubii moonlight. And over here, I have some Paraiso Verdes, uh, an Alt Choco growing back here, a Glorious, and a Magnificum, the one that I got from Green Spaces. I cut it into two. So this is a different plant now. And that's this cabinet. And I'm now in my restroom. This is our guest restroom. And we don't have too many guests at the moment, so it's just become my grow room. It is 70% humidity in here with about 74 degrees Fahrenheit. I think outside of this room, it's closer to 70 degrees, so it is warmer in here, partially due to the, due to the grow lights and partially due to that humidifier. It's a warm humidifier, at least the setting is on warm right now, and it is basically on all the time during the winter. Otherwise, this room drops humidity probably below 50%, and that's not great for my plants. On the other side is a bunch of plant stuff in this corner. I don't really like this perlite, by the way. Don't buy it. I think it's too fine, but I needed perlite, and I just bought it from my local garden store. I'm just calling that out because I don't want you to watch this video and buy that. Do not, don't, don't buy that. <laughs> There's a few plants here that I don't really have space for on the shelf. This one is a Painted Lady. This one is a Stephanie and Nova that I actually do need to put on the shelf, but I don't have the right pot for it at the moment. And here is a giant Hawaiian pothos cutting. This is a picture of liquid dirt. This is some plant therapy spray. Kind of smells like peppermint because there's peppermint oil in it. I don't have a verdict on this yet, so can't say I recommend it, but I have been using it and we'll give an update at some point. Another thing I want to give an update on is actually this thing. It's called Natural. I bought it on eBay. And you just stick it in your water. Um, oh, there's a coupon and you just put this powder in your water and you water your plants with it. It saves you from needing to make tea with mosquito bits. I think it's the same bacteria, but it's just way more convenient to actually measure out and use. This is my bathtub that I mostly don't use. I do use it to quarantine new plants because it gets enough light from the grow lights behind is a bunch of potting mix. <laughs> so I went out of town for about five or six days during Thanksgiving and I didn't instruct our cat sitter to water these plants behind me. I thought it would be fine. I'm only mentioning this because you're going to see some of my prized plants like this beautiful pink princess that I've been growing lost basically all of its lower leaves and I'm kind of devastated about it but also Maybe I'll just cut it again and propagate it. I don't know. So here are some plants that I'm growing. 
There's two Atabapoenses here. There's a Veritosum that has a little bit of damage from grill lights. This one is the mother plant for my Anthurium. Turns out it is a Brigettii X Clarinervium. It's a hybrid. I have a Pomania here. A Warroquinum. This one's a regular one. This one's a strawberry shake that has never done that well. And here's the pink princess that lost all its bottom leaves. But these top three ones are doing okay. I really hope it doesn't lose them. The top leaves are really dark with the pink. So I call this my black pink plant. Uh, this one's a gigas and it's putting out a new leaf. It's a clarinervium that put out two inflorescences and no new leaves. It's finally putting out hopefully a new leaf and not an inflorescence. Inflorescences do take a lot of the plant's energy. And I think I need to repot this because I actually think this potting medium that I put, I don't even know what's in here. It's been a while since I planted this, but it's kind of this weird mix of moss and leca. I just don't think it does a good enough job holding moisture and I don't want to water this every day. So I need to find a different solution for that. So I bring a fire gun over here, a varicosum and a melanochrism down there. And this one here is a Soderini that I propagated. This is the bottom cut, or just the plant after you cut all of it off, and it's putting out a new leaf, so that's great. Here's a Postazanum that I propagated. You can see that it's putting out a new leaf down there. And I have a few plants going over here that I don't really want to open up and show. That one's a Stephania erecta, which is kind of fun. I actually have no idea what this plant is. It has red backs, so it might be a Sebastatum cutting. I should have labeled it. I don't remember what it is, but we'll find out when it gets older. And this is a moss box with some props. Nothing really to show yet. There's some leaves coming out and some grass, but it's going. And honestly, I have this fly trap thing, but I don't need it. It's, these are all old flies, so I should get rid of it. It's really gross. Yeah, just a bunch of plants growing. This is one of my favorites right now. It's an El Choco Red, which is, I guess, a type of varicosum. But this new leaf is pretty big. It's going to come out soon. It's actually not going to fit in here soon. I need to find a new place for it. This Warroquinum is finally putting out a new leaf. This one's the dark and narrow form that I got a long time ago. And up top we have my bigger plant. So here is an, a Monstera Albo with a new shoot coming out after I cut it. The top part here is this plant over here. And it's also putting out a new leaf, and I gave it a pole to climb. This one, this velvety big leaf is from a Philodendron Splendid, which is a cross between Melanochrism and uh, Vericosum. This one is the White Knight Mama that I propagated all the other ones from. Finally putting out some new growth from underneath, but I think these top ones are done, so I might just cut these off. Um, sometimes the node can get what is called spent, which means no new leaves will ever come out of that node, and I think this one is spent up top. This is my other pink princess propagation that's been big. I think this leaf is a goner. It's like really yellow and weird. So I should probably cut it. This one's another elbow. These are all from the same... It, this was the original Monstera elbow, and then I propagated it to have this one that I then also propagated to have this one. 
which I will also maybe cut again, so we'll see. And back here is a philodendron red moon. It stuck out a new growth with some new leaves. They're very lime yellow with not that much red on it. I would expect it to have like a splash of red like this, so I might cut it because that means that this might be reverted. I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna wait for that last leaf to unfurl. And that's basically my grow room situation. I have some fans going as well to help with the humidity circulation. And I do most of my repotting on the floor here in this room. Good. Here. Anyways, that's mostly all I had to update you all. I do have more plants than that, but honestly they're more common plants or um, they're kind of repeats of the same plant that I already showed you. So I did not film all the parts of my home, but those are the main plant areas. It's this room and the grow room that I just showed you. And Artie is the king of the jungle in this room. <laughs> And also there's just like toys everywhere, like, there's just so many that are all over the floor. So it gets kind of a mess here, but I hope you enjoyed seeing all my plants and if there's any of them that you've been tracking throughout my videos, I hope you got to see a good update of them and liked seeing that. There are some plants that I've killed that I've shown over the videos. I think the main one that I'm a little heartbroken about is the Anthurium chamberlainii. I've had that in like a video, I think probably from my first green spaces video that I filmed and I just overwatered it and I don't think the soil had enough circulation so it just got root rot and got soggy and lost its leaves and died. And I should have noticed sooner but I didn't and I couldn't save it because it was too late by the time I got to it. So that's also why I really like going around and looking at my plants all the time. It is nice to see all the new growth especially when you have a lot of plants going there's always something new and it also helps you track you know when a plant is not doing as well and if you should repot it or do some sort of countermeasures to try to keep it alive honestly i feel like my soul is getting sucked out of me asking you to follow me on these things so Never mind, you do whatever you want to do, but if you've made it this far in the video, thanks again and happy holidays. I hope you all have a really positive end to your 2020 and I'm excited to see you all again soon.